Charles, welcome to Personal Business Growth. Um, very pleased to have you here. Uh, would you like to start by introducing yourself with your name and what you currently do? Okay. Well, thanks, Massimo. Thanks for being here. So my name is Charles Towers Clark. Yes. Um, I have been running for the last 20 years a group called Pod Group. Mm -hmm. uh, we provide IoT data connectivity around the world. I uh, have six offices or so. Um, but more recently, I've written a book called The Weird CEO. Yes. Uh, which is about AI and how we need to change the way that we're working to, to deal with the fact that there could be uh, quite a large lo job losses or, or at best we need to change the way that we are uh, approaching work from a process led to um, something where we're using more of our human skills to be, uh, to be managing, managing AI and, and managing the future of work. Um, so that's been my main focus, um, right. and I get more into that because it actually came out of a change I made within within Pod Group. Fantastic, thank you. And we can definitely speak more about the book later on. I'm quite intrigued about uh, the the content and how it uh, it pans out. So can you just give me a give us a bit of introduction about how your past experience has led to what you're doing today? Yeah, so I, I started Pod 20 years ago, as I said, a um, one-man band, um, started off trying to, um, uh, with a, with a well, in the, the year 2000, lots of people were going to need things delivered, um, so I created this proof of delivery box, um, unfortunately sold the patent, and now I've seen that Amazon has gone invested in somebody for vast fortunes of money for pretty much the same concept. Oh, wow. Um, um, so that was where it started, but I, I realized that it wasn't going to really work. So I pivoted out of that. Okay. And, and I pivoted into um, a few things on the way until we stopped with uh, providing network services. So th the answer is how I got to where I got to is just by kept going and pivoting when needed to until yeah. I found the right thing, Fantastic. which actually could support. All right. So the next question would be, was it a gradual or sharp, uh, sorry, was it a gradual progression or sharp pivoting? You just mentioned quite a few pivots until you found. Yeah, I mean, I pivot, it, 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 was, it was only in 2012. So there's two or three pivots before that. Yeah. And it was only in 2012 that I uh, recapitalized the business. Mm. And from there, it went from one person to nearly 50 people now, um, which is what we've got. Um, so. 12 years in the in the wilderness <laughs> and then and then it went from there so you got to a critical mass and then then you yeah. start to grow from there yeah exactly. okay as far as your personal uh, view of how business was going was anything holding you back to decide to go into this uh, career this enterprise let's call it um, anything holding back? Th well, if I can re rephrase that, through the course of the business. Yes. Yeah. Um, well, money is always. We've had this discussion. Big cost. Yeah. <laughs> we've of had course. this discussion this morning about money. Of course. Um, and can can we do more? Could we have done more? Could I have accelerated faster with with uh, with more money? I, as we discussed earlier, I took yeah. the, took the option not to do that. I didn't right. get investment in. Um, and I and I kept con control and 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 allowed and built organically. Um, do I regret that? Absolutely not. Okay. Um, so that that was one of the wiser decisions. I made a lot of very unwise decisions, but that was one of the wiser decisions from my viewpoint. Yeah. Um, to make sure that uh, it grew organically. It's very difficult now, though, for businesses to grow organically. Yes. Because. The, the, there's so many other people who are just grabbing customers with money. Yes. Um, trying to get for that free. critical for free. Yes. Trying to get that critical mass. Yes. Yes. And yes. and it's very very difficult to compete with that. I'm not sure it's really very possible to do so anymore. Um, so we've got into this situation where it's you've got to be very very resilient to carry on without getting investment. Absolutely. Um, so I guess that's on top of mind because of the conversations we had earlier on yes. this morning. So um, apart from that, um, is there anything else? Um, 
Daniel Pink has been, I think it was Daniel Pink who was talking a lot about grit. Um, mm-hmm. uh, and I do think that that is a fascinating subject. Yeah. Um, and, and a great indicator as to success or not. Yeah. Yeah, I, I guess there is a there is a fine line between stubbornness of say I'm stubborn and I'm gonna do it regardless. At some point, in some cases, you also need to be aware this is never gonna go somewhere. Yeah. So sometimes it's time to jump the boat, yeah, yeah. <laughs> jump off the boat. But for the majority of people, like yourself, like many other people I've interviewed that have made it to a level of success, a certain level of success, is going pushing through every hurdle, every obstacle, every problem you get through, there is a solution. Let's look for the solution. Let's move on. So yeah. it's great. And, and the level of, as you say, you've got to know when to stop. So it's also a level of self-awareness yes. Yes. to realize you're being an yeah. idiot. Yeah. Also, if you listen to people next to you, most of the time they say, well, now it's time to stop. It's time to stop. So many of, 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 of us that have gone through uh, this kind of experience, you know, they have ignored very, very often signals of people that would have given up much faster. And because you went through, then now you're enjoying the results. Do you remember what was uh, the biggest challenge? Do you have one particular challenge that you remember being more bigger than anything else in, in these 20 years of growth? I think the... the I think actually I'm going to, maybe it wasn't the biggest challenge at all, but, mm-hmm. but just from what you just said, I just yeah. to carry on with that. I have a mentor um, mm-hmm. who is 25 years older than myself and has been an enormous help all the way through, mm-hmm. uh, through my business. And a couple of years ago, I decided to change my business around. So to push um, the responsibility and uh, initiative down, down, down the, down the uh, organization and try and remove hierarchy. Yeah. And, we spent six months going through this process, undoing, basically undoing the organization. And it was a really painful and very, very upsetting time. There were a lot of tears and, and a lot of aggro. And it, was, it really wasn't a pleasant experience. But I knew that I had to do it mm. in order to be able to take the organization forward and for, to be able to scale yeah. um, further forward. And my mentor at the time... I had said to everybody in the organization, because he was quite respected, although he's my mentor, he was quite respected by people in the company. Yeah. I'd said that they could go to him confidentially, have conversations with him, and yeah. he would not repeat them back. And he came to me and said, you've got to stop this. You're killing your organization. Right. People are going to be leaving. It's a disaster. You need to stop it. Okay. You need to stop that change process you're trying to make. And I basically said okay I could do that but all I will have achieved is six months of hell and and broke got a lot of people very angry and for yeah. nothing um, and I said no I'm going to carry on going through it mm. even at the risk of of people this leaving and, yeah. and doing it um, and this is a guy I respect hugely and he's got a lot of business experience um, and I decided to ignore him um, uh, as it turned out it turned out okay um, <laughs> And uh, we got through and it came out the, the other side. But it's when you, going back to exactly the point you said yeah. earlier on, there are times when you have to listen to other people and there are times when you have to say, you're right, but I'm going to ignore you anyway. Yeah. And in general, uh, success stories are the ones that uh, go through successfully and the others don't <laughs> Yeah, speak you don't about hear about them. <laughs> most of the times, yeah. Um, yes. Do you remember... If this is not the case, one mistake was more painful than the others in the, all the decisions you've taken in these 20 years. So the, the, the biggest mistake I've made and the reason why I went through pain for the first 10 years yeah. was that I did I focused too much on the product. Yes. And, and things have changed since then. We, the, the concept of the minimum viable product yes. wasn't really around in 2000 mm-hmm. in, a, in a great degree. Eric Fries was probably a primary school. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So, I'm joking, but yeah, he is. Um, he's I can't remember when it came out, but it wasn't, it, it no, wasn't around. Um, so instead of really focusing on the minimum viable product and, uh, and, and focusing more on marketing and sales, mm. Again, I was too focused on the product. I was too focused on everything around running a business. Because yeah. even in those days, there weren't that many entrepreneurs. I mean, mm. I, I remember walking into a, a, social in, uh, a social environment and I was the only entrepreneur in the room. Yeah. Um, so 
that was the mistake I made was not focusing on the sales. Yeah. And because I didn't have sales, I didn't have revenue. And because I didn't have revenue, I had to borrow and borrow and borrow and borrow. Absolutely. Um, so that was the single biggest mistake. And that put, if I focused on that, I would have probably started making, would have, it yeah. wouldn't have taken 12 years to get to a stage where it could really grow. It could have taken just a couple. Okay. Is there anything that you think you should or could have done that you didn't do in this process? Now you just told me what you one mistake you made. Is there something that you have kind of regret? Oh, I could have gone down that way. I could have done this and you didn't. Well, yeah. And, and so the obvious one is I didn't get a salesperson on. Yeah, yeah. Um, Obviously. That, that, that was the main focus. The other one was that um, I got so fixated on the sort of sexy ideas yeah. and didn't look at what was staring me in the face. So it was more of a case of um, I was fo focused on the gold mm. rather than providing the spades to get the gold. Right. And, and you were just looking at... Yeah, I was looking at what seemed the sexy product. All this time, I had actually been providing the, the data connectivity, network connectivity yeah. to partners and some people along the lines. Mm -hmm. But it was only after eight years that I realized that was the place where I could really make the business. But it right. just because it wasn't sexy, I didn't bother with it. I didn't think, oh, well, maybe I just focus on that. And it was a very, and it is a very low, each unit is, is worth very little money. So rather than big sales, it's lots of little sales. Lots of little sales. Lots of little in, sales. In the space you are in is yeah, exactly. micro sales. Yes. Um, and so that that... It's very easy to get drawn towards the sexy things and actually not realize that the really thing which can make you lots of money yeah. is sitting there in your face. Yeah, sometimes you look at the numbers and analyze them properly and start looking at the big multipliers and this sort of thing. It's fantastic, yeah. yeah. Do you remember, do you have a, a proudest moment in all these 20 years of uh, activities that you sticks so, out more than others? So the, the, the proudest has definitely been in, in the last couple of years. Right. Um, that so the, the 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 book that i wrote weird was based on this change that i mentioned earlier on yeah um and that was all about um changing the the environment with which in which uh, our employees are working so not to get into too much detail but starting from the extreme end mm. we now allow people to choose their own salaries we well, allow them to work where they want we work allow them to work when they want um we're putting we basically getting rid of departments so that people are working, going in and out of teams as they want. Um, and it's those, those are the moments where uh, I get proud when I see people doing things that they would never have done in a hierarchical organization. Um, so I can't, there's, so for example, one of the issues I have with, with, with one, of, one of the people in, at work is you need to be asking for an increase in your salary. Well, wow. because she does because she she she's undervalued herself right in terms of what she's doing. I've seen how far she's gone. Yes. But she doesn't necessarily see it herself. Wow. Um and and that 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 makes me proud because I could see this person who started off as very unconfident. They we come into they come into a technical environment mm. and they're not technical. Oh wow, okay. And they they've really grasped it. I don't think in the first twenty years of their life they would have ever imagined that they would understand the technology like they do. Mm. Um, so there was one. I guess the probably the proudest actually is the same person. We pushed her off to go to um, um, to to do a speech at a, uh, at a conference wow. um, on security on technical security, a whole bunch of questions. I mean, she was absolutely didn't want to do it. Yeah. You know, maybe this other person could go do it yeah. rather than me. And, and we said to her, no, you can do it. Mm. You can do it, Anna. Just, just go and do it. Um, and afterwards, I got one of our main competitors, much, much bigger than ourselves, saying, I saw this person at your organization. I want to meet you. Wow. That's great. No, um, that's so, a big transformation. Of it is huge, I and mean, there's lots of examples like that within the organisation. So that makes me really proud. Great! Wow, fascinating. Yeah. Um, the next question is: 
have you oh do you feel you've always been an entrepreneur an entrepreneur or you you had evolved into one yeah i i think i think it's probably safe to say i've always been an entrepreneur I'm you always way. felt you were an entrepreneur and not 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 until after i left school yeah um and actually even after university yeah. um i i was did it but yeah i, I I'm, i'm not one of these people who's a, can have that story about they were selling you know, napkins or something at no. the age of 14 and, and they've built their first business on yeah. that no no <laughs> i was a really boring guy i had no idea what i wanted to do <laughs> right um uh in fact i still it, it had no idea what i wanted to do until about the age of 50 um so i've still so no it, it i didn't feel like an entrepreneur but i guess the fact that i went off to russia in uh, 93 um when it was just opening up yes um and and so from there yeah i've always done yeah. stuff on my own Great. Um, can you list a few, two, three, four milestones? Um, so yeah, the first, the 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 biggest milestone was when I it was in 2010 um, when I took on the first two employees in mm-hmm. Pop 2.0. Yes, um, and they are. Uh, still there. One is the marketing director of the group, and the other is now the CEO of the group. Right. Um, um, so that and that was the start of of, of pushing it on from there. Um, we had an interesting question. I'm going to diverge slightly. Sure, we had an interesting debate this morning on, on whether you should have partners or not. Yes. We disagreed on that. Of course, um, <laughs> as, as we, we always do. do. <laughs> <laughs> um, and um, the it. it, it i think it made it easier the fact that I hadn't brought them in as partners. Mm. Um, they are now partners. They are now shareholders. I made yeah. sure they've got shareholding in the company. Mm. Um, but in terms of uh, sort of diverging off, there, it doesn't necessarily have to be. You need to bring partners in. Um, so that was one milestone. Yeah. Um, the next second milestone was the realization a couple of years ago that we need to change the way that we work. Right. Um, and we've got to stick out getting people to start thinking rather than doing process. Yes. Um, and that that was what then instigated this whole process. Um, and the, the third milestone, I'd probably say, is it's never going to end. But once we had finished that first change yeah. process um, to to really allow people to go off and do what yeah. they think is necessary. Which I guess, you know, the second milestone was a realization you need to do it. And then there was all the implementation process, which, yeah, which, was which is still ongoing. Yeah. yeah. Great. Question about, um, do you think more people should become entrepreneurs? Can I get political? By all means. <laughs> um, so the... The part of the what I was writing on, and I also write for Forbes as yes, well. Yes, of course, um, I'm, and I'm aware. I'm a contributor on Forbes as well. And what what I write about is is the or what I especially wrote about about in the book is the uh, the the need to um, to change the way that we're thinking. And yeah. a large part of that is yes. I mean, you could say I don't ever define it as thinking more entrepreneurial, but mm. yes, to some degree, that is. I have a great concern that we are going to see, so as an example, lots of jobs, as an example, uh, drivers, 5% of the working population, both in the UK and the US and probably in most other countries, are directly driving. At some point in the future... You mean they are doing a job that is related to driving, yes? Not related, they are They, they are, are the drivers. They are the driving. Beyond the that, there's auxiliary people. Yeah. Sure. Organizing them and yeah. you know, doing So you mean taxi drivers, bus Correct. drivers, Correct. any kind of any, drivers. Any okay. kind of drivers, uh, commercial vehicle. So at some point, those drivers will lose their job. Absolutely. And there are many, many industries where that will happen. Yes. The problem we have is that if you... There was a study recently by Oxford Economics, mm-hmm. which is looking at where people are likely to lose their jobs. Mm. And so if, if you take the UK as an example, um, the North and Northeast, there's a lot of jobs there which are far easier to automate mm. than in the South, London and yeah. so forth. So there's probably going to be greater job losses yeah. in those areas. I am actually coming back to your question. Sure. Um, um, with the result that 
you need to retrain those people, but what, yes. what are you going to retrain them to do? Um, so my view is, is that we need to retrain them. I think to say we need to retrain them as entrepreneurs is the wrong way to look at it, but we need to retrain them so that they are willing to take initiative yeah. and take responsibility for themselves, which are two tra traits that an entrepreneur yeah. needs to do. Um, and the political part yeah. is that if those jobs are not available, we may need to be looking at things like the, the minimum basic income, mm. um, guaranteed basic universal income, income yes. uh, universal basic income, thank you. Um, and in that case, you'd have, if you've got a universal basic income, you've got to be training people to, or, or, or encouraging people to be taking the most out of what they're doing. Yes. And it may not be entrepreneurial in the way that we see it as you go and make lots of money, yeah. but it's entrepreneurial in so much as they're going off and doing something for themselves, yes. creating something, yes. even if it's not a money venture, it's, yeah. it's creating something. Not everybody can become Mark Zuckerberg, but a lot of people can make a, a good living out of running their own business. Or maybe not even making a living, just, just doing a, something for, for charity or, or, okay. or filling their time yes. in a way that they satisfies them. Yes. But, that, but they've got an income to, to be able to last off that. Yes. But they still need some of those sort of skills that we talk about for an entrepreneur, the yes. ability to get out of bed in the morning, to, to not be to when you get knocked down to get stand up again yeah. um, and and so yeah some of the skills same skills thinking on your own not waiting for somebody to tell you what to do take decisions problem exactly. solving exactly. the lot all, all the whole lot so it, I I wouldn't have put it in terms of entrepreneurialism yeah but it's the same characteristics yes yeah. yeah 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 great thank you um, when you are running your business, what is your relationship with patients, if you have one? <laughs> Not good. <laughs> well, that's great. Um, no, I don't, I'm not a very patient person. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that that is slightly a skill that, a, that an entrepreneur may want to have, mm -hmm. lack of patience. Um, the lack of patience. <laughs> the lack of patience. Because okay. you need to get things done. Right. And, and if you're patiently waiting for it to happen, then it probably may not happen. Um, okay. So I, I think patience may be the wrong word, but the, the ability to go, come on, guys, let's yeah. get this done. Yeah. Uh, in, my, in my view of patience as an entrepreneur is uh, the more looking at the long term. So waiting, sometimes success doesn't come. Success, whatever the measure you know, whatever key indicator we want to use to measure success, which doesn't have to be money or, or, but the results, the good results of a business sometimes take a lot of time. So on one hand, we mentioned grit a couple of times in this uh, conversation today, but if you're not patient and you expect that success will manifest in, in three months, in six months, in a year, very often businesses like yours and many others that I've seen happen because you've been working patiently in this case yeah. for years. And that, that, that was more the... the yeah, the I, think, I think that's probably very accurate. Um, but it's also a question of what goal are you looking at? So yeah. for me, I have very little patience to get the, the things done today which need to be done. Okay. Um, and that's what I'm focused on is today's issues. Right. The, the grand success or the... the longer strategic stuff I I'm not sure I focus on those very much okay because <laughs> I'm focusing on so, the day to day on the little parts to get let's to the move big on one. the next step yeah what's the next step yeah. and then yeah. you are impatient on that just Correct. to get get going of yeah. course and yeah. you need that otherwise if you're just sitting around to happen you know, yeah. I mean if you expect happens. great success to happen yeah. as you say it doesn't yeah. happen it does it does and another question is what's your relationship with consi consistency in applying your way of working and stuff like this um well if you ask my children yes. not very high apparently okay um, um and and actually it's it 
it, it being flippant apart, it, it is necessary to be consistent, yes. especially when you have with employees. Yes. Um, because otherwise they don't know where they're, yes. you know, where, where they're trying to go. Right. Um, I don't think I am as consistent as I should be for sure. Okay. Um, uh, but it comes also similar to what you were saying earlier on mm-hmm. um, about the, 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 uh, the long-term goal versus the short Mm-hmm. Um, if you're consistent on the long-term goals, yes. that's one thing. But there may be a need to constantly be changing yes. the, the the short-term goals to get to that long-term goal. Right. And and sometimes it's it's the thing about an entrepreneur. I think is that they can keep the long-term goal in their head. Yes. While at the same time worrying about the small ones. And, and of course, maybe other people in the organisation may not really either keep it in their head or may not understand the long-term yeah. goal. So it can be quite confusing for people. Is why are you going off here when when yes. you just said we should be doing this over here? So well, because actually that over there is going to take us longer to get to here. Yeah. Um, so I would say I'm not great on consistency, mm-hmm. um, but I always justify it that actually the longer term goal is is worth yeah. it. Okay. And last one is what's the relationship? You already mentioned it a couple of times, but uh, the relationship with adaptability a quick and quick change of direction when you are running a business? The, uh, as you say, I've already mentioned it. So, so maybe bringing up from another angle yeah. is, is again, is, is the, the ability to communicate it is key yeah. um, so that other people can understand mm-hmm. change and, um, and being uh, the need to be adaptable. Right. Um, in any given circumstance. Um, but I, I don't think there's any problem with change. Um, and and through, th- through my own change process of talking to a number of big companies about mm-hmm. their change process, and their change process always fails. The, the, the idea of the change they're trying to do is, is fine. Yeah. But it always fails on communication. Yes. Um, so... Change whether you change, don't change. I don't think it really matters. The question is, is whether you've communicated it so that everybody else knows what you're trying to do, and 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 can see your vision and can follow you in in the the, communi- yeah. the, 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 yeah. the change process. Okay, um, can you give us a quick outline of your book in terms of like to tell other people why they should be reading it uh, i think it's a fascinating book but uh, okay. i would like you the author to <laughs> explain it a bit why um, should somebody read weird entrepreneur the weird ceo so we'll see you. um it's 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 a two really it's a split into two okay um the first part is about ai and there's a little bit of description on on why ai works and how it works okay. um, and examples of where ai is working um and it does get into things like the 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 um, universal basic income um and then the second part of it um and and the main crux of that is exactly what i've just said that there's going to be in my view there's going to be a huge loss of uh, loss of jobs um and that we are not uh we're not preparing ourselves for it and it yeah. really worries me I, i think that this is going to be as as big of an issue as as climate change Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know if you you're, know Stuart Russell, the philosopher. He's He keeps going on about it and everything. Well, don't worry about it. And he's going, we need to worry about it. Mm-hmm. We need to be looking at it. We need to be thinking about how we're going yes. to do it. But when I'm when I'm speaking at uh, conferences and things, I mean, I could just see people blazing over and going, they're boring. Who cares? You know, it's just, I've got enough problems to deal with today. And I get that. I, I do understand it. But, but it, it worries me because... Um, aside of the, the, the sort of doomsday once we get to artificial general intelligence what a robot's going to do I think that's a very very long way away I'm not very worried about that mm. um, the science fiction type sure. scenarios which I think needs to be kind of put aside yeah. slightly but, but what, what does worry me especially in the political climate we're in at the moment yes. is what's going to happen um, when we have a whole bunch of people who are, are still under the The, the, the culture where you have to have a job yes. and yet there is no jobs for them to do. Yes. You know, it's not a good scenario. So that, that, so part of the book is, is talking about that. Yes. 
The second part of the book is is around the change and I go through the change we made um, in 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 our own organisation within Pod Group. Um, I actually kept a blog uh, for twenty six weeks, mm-hmm. going through through uh, what we were doing every week, um, and it, it, I included it into the book. Um, okay. Uh, and also uh, around that is is what we're doing now and the ways that we can change our organisations to be empowering, uh, empowering people, um, uh, empowering employees. And the basic premise is is that the more that we push the responsibility down, the more you're going to get, the more profit the company is going to make, the more the shell is going to make. It, it's it's fairly easy. Is that applicable? You believe in any company, so any company as it is run today can apply this principle. Absolutely. Or is it more? recruiting people from the beginning which would fit into this philosophy so um, I changed started changing organization once we got to 30 to 40 people yes so it wasn't recruited no for that it's easier recruitment is definitely a, a major part of it yeah um, but I very very strongly believe that it's the environment we had a we did a couple of surveys to people through the process one mm-hmm. of them was do you want us to go through this? Um, and do you see that? Do you, do you want us to do this change? And, and everybody but two people said yes. Okay. And those two people said, well, I don't know, frankly, you decide yourself. Okay, I just want to turn up to work. Right. I want to do my eight hours and I want to go home. Right. Um, and since then, certainly one of those, well, one of the person, people left because they actually had to move country, but the other person who, who's still there they're as dedicated as anybody else in the organization okay. so if you create the i do believe if you create the environment mm. then people will change themselves right to go with the environment they won't do it immediately and there's always problems on the way and there's always people who may not want to fit in or whatever yeah. but not everybody's going to change but actually if you change if you it's rather like saying if you if you put a child into a school yes. where there's a bunch of people who are bullying yes. and most people bullying and, and are mean to each other, yes. then that child is going to end up being mean. If you put them into a school where everybody respects each other... Absolutely. The, so it's the same in an organization. The environment. Yes. It's the environment. Yeah. Um, so no, I don't think it's, it's uh, about, um, uh, about recruitment. One of, the, one of your questions further on is who's your hero? Um, yes. And so the, the, the person who really gave the uh, input on this, not the input, but the, the inspiration on inspiration, this, inspiration, yeah. was uh, a guy called Ricardo Semler, who okay. ran a company in Semco, called Semco in Brazil. Okay. And this was in the 1970s. Brazil was in hyperinflation, yes. unions galore, and he's running an industrial company which makes ships engines or something similar. And wow. he decides to start implementing this. Wow. So he, one of the things he did was to say that people can choose where and when they want to work. Well, not when, where, but wow. when they want to work. So, so what happens, he left it to the guys there. And the guy who lives two hours away on the other side of uh, Sao Paulo yeah. has to leave at six in the morning mm-hmm. um, to be there for nine. Yeah. If he leaves at 5.30, he can get there at 6.30. Mm. Um, Compared to the other, so he's the forklift driver. Yeah. The machine guy, uh, drilling guy, lives next door. He can turn up at nine. So they're all having to come in at nine. So they're all there at the same time. Mm. So what Semla did is step back. So we work it out. So the the machine guy learned how to drive the forklift. Right. The forklift guy learned how to use the machine. Right. So now the the guy from the other side of San Paulo comes in really early, leaves early. Yeah. And it worked. Um, the biggest problem was he had was with the uh, with the unions yeah. who kept trying to negotiate that the five minutes leeway that they have um, be- when they turn up before they have to clock in yeah. they wouldn't get that leeway and Semco was go- Semco was going well they can turn up when they want it doesn't matter um, so yeah. if he can do it in an organisation like that yes in the nineteen seventies there's no organisation in the in twenty nineteen where it yeah. can't be done. If you want to do it. And therein lies the problem, is the CEO has to, has to be, and it has to come from the top. Yes. Because, and, and also, 
there's a lot of people out there at the moment who are talking about empowering companies. Yes. What they're actually doing is kind of putting it's the 80-20 rule. They're giving them 80% of the freedom. Yes. But they're still controlling that 20%. Mm. And because they're controlling that 20%, they're not people are still feeling, well, I can I can do this within these parameters which are set. Yeah. Well, that's not true empowerment. Okay. Um, so that's why there's a lot of companies out there who are talking about it that are, in my view, not actually succeeding in in empowering. And once you start empowering, then you start get reaping the benefits from employees taking initiative on things and doing other stuff. And this is all a self-control system. There is no controlling mechanisms as such. In terms no, there are. There are, definitely. Um, so it, it's all around advice. 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 Mm-hmm. Um, so anybody can make any decision mm-hmm. so long as they've gone and sought advice. If they go and make a decision and it's going to cost the company a lot of money and they haven't sought advice on it, okay. then that's problematic. Right. Okay. Okay. Um, so it is all about the advice process. Yes. Um, and the need to go and ask advice. And you going and asking me because I'm your best buddy mm. and you know that I'm going to say yes, that's confirmation bias. That's not advice. Okay. So you need to go advice for people that... Correct. So an example of that is our salary process when people right. choose salaries. They can't just go and choose a, whatever salary they like. A million a year. A million a year. Because, so there's a couple of rules we have. It can't kill the business. Right. Um, and you have to go and get advice. Yes. So what we do is it's passed on to our HR director who then appoints six people wow. to give feedback on their request. Okay. Well, it's not a request because they can go ahead and do it anyway afterwards. Mm. Um, and... And if they want to go and ask for a million, they can get their million, but they would probably be then fired fairly shortly afterwards because clearly they don't bring value enough compared to, to a million. To justify a million. <laughs> yes. But I guess, I mean, uh, considering a company with all the centralized processes and all the budgets done uh, by certain people and so on, you, yeah, you got to look very carefully about how this, this can happen. Because, say, today the company is making X amount of money, it's got X amount of profit. So um, somebody making, I don't know, 50K can justify making 75K, let's suppose. Things might go cyc- cyclical. So 75K, yeah. if, if like everybody gets an increase of 50% of their salary, today might be justifiable. Then maybe the business gets a slightly slower maybe next year, do you see also this happening? Uh, so review salary in both directions in Correct. this case? Absolutely. It does. Absolutely. Okay. Do I see it happening? Yes. Um, the only person who has reduced their salary to date is myself. Okay. Um, <laughs> As en- entrepreneurs and CEOs do occasionally, uh, yes. Uh, we haven't got into that scenario yet. I'm right. Sure we won't soon mm. where we need to. Um would people do it if they if the business calls for it? I believe they would, yeah. Okay. So they have this visibility. It's not like one way well, up only. One, yeah. I mean, the, the one of the other things we do is, is total transparency. Yeah. So everybody knows every single piece of information in regards to, uh, well, anything they want to see in regards to the company, but certainly in terms of finances. Yeah. Every month we're, we're reporting back on... All, all of our finances in so detail. So management accounts are open to oh, everybody. Absolutely. Everybody. They're all open to everybody. Okay. Um, so everybody knows, okay, I want a 50% increase, but the company is not capable of giving you 50%. Increase. Yeah. And, and, but the question is not, I want 50% increase. Is well, why? Exactly. Is that the, uh, there's a couple of other things we do here. Is, is uh, It needs to be in line with the market. Yes. Because if it's not in line with the market and you want 50% increase, well, I'm sorry, but actually... I can go and get somebody to do your job absolutely um, for a lot less, and so you need to be realistic. Um, so there, there are checks and balances in, sure. in the system um, on it. Everybody gets fixated on the salary side. Um, yeah. For me, it's a, it's kind of a bit irrelevant. Um, I'm firmly of, of of the Charles Dickens view that if you've got enough, then money is a non motivator. Hmm. Um, so we we used to do bonuses. We've removed those. Wow. Um, I, I firmly believe that bonuses are a nightmare because people focus towards the bonus rather than focus towards net profit of the company. Right. Um, if you if people are paid enough, then they they stop focusing on money and start 
focusing on everything else. If they're not paid enough, then they feel of course they feel up, upset. Yeah, I, I guess there is a minimum a minimum level of salary that is necessary for you to have, uh, you know, security and Correct. shelter and food and clothes exactly. on, you know, and the minimum level that you should be. Um, yeah, and there's enough studies out there which actually very very. There's one by Tiny Pulse. It's, it's a, a couple of years old now, but. Um, and it, basically, sixty-eight percent of motivation mm. comes from peer uh, appreciation, well, feeling you're doing a good job, um, and and sort of aspects related to that. Yeah, credit from your boss, something like four percent. I mean, it's, yeah. it's minute money. Again, way out of that sixty-eight percent. Wow. Um, so yeah, it's, it's money. Money is a non-motivator in my in my view. Great. Okay. Excellent. So let's move on with the questions. We have a few more questions before we, we wrap up. So the question is about you and uh, your routine, your life, your routine. So do you exercise? And if so, how often? I'm trying to see how healthy the entrepreneur entrepreneurs who are coming to see me are. So what is your exercise so I've, routine? I've, I have exercised if, all the way through my life. Now I go walking every morning yeah. for, for over an hour. Mm-hmm. Um, great opportunity to learn some pop- listen to some podcast on the way. Yeah, um, great. So I, I yeah I I go walking every morning, um, and that's basically it now. Mm. Um, but good, good if you do walk. it consistently, it's, yeah, it's good exercise. Yeah, yeah. it is good yeah. exercise. Yeah. Um, question for you and for your company at the moment. Where do you see yourself in three years time? Um. Uh, that's a question I'm struggling with quite hard at the moment, actually, mm. uh, uh, because I, as I said, I've, I've handed the reins on to um, on to my colleagues, so I've mm. got a bit more time to be thinking about what I want to be doing. Yes, um, I, I'm focusing towards education. Yes, um, and um, how do we solve the problem which I brought up earlier about how do we change people's mindsets so that they start using their the soft skills and the human values that we should be using. Yes. Um, so that that's that's where my focus is at the moment. Um, Great. And where in three years' time, I have no idea, but it'll be something around that. Yeah. I, most of these questions usually come in in five year <laughs> five year goal, mm. and I thought five years in two thousand and nineteen. Oh, it's a long it's time. It's a very very long time because yeah. if I think back at two thousand and fourteen my old vision about business and how it's going was completely different. So I thought yeah. three years is kind of shorter and yeah, likely yeah. more likely to have a, an idea where you're going. Last question for you before we wrap up would be if you could give someone advice, somebody starting up in a business, or right. somebody who is aiming to become an entrepreneur or starting any entrepreneur activity, what advice would you give them? It could be more than one. Okay, so we're based in Cambridge. Yes. Which is seems to be f- totally focused around raising money, right? Um, and especially in line with the conversation we had earlier on, one piece of advice I would give is if you've got the and it does take a certain characteristics. I agree. If you've got the ability to 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 do things on your own, mm-hmm. get advice from people, mm-hmm. but um, try and try and do it yourself and try and grow it organically mm-hmm. if possible yes um, otherwise once you're into that investment rounds you can't get out of it it's, yeah, a, it's yeah. a pyramid scheme and you're Absolutely. and you're there and you're stuck um, so get as far as you can before you have to do that um, I think that's and the second piece comes back to my biggest mistake yes. get some revenue in yes once you've got revenue, everything else can sit, can yeah. falls into yeah. line. If you don't have the revenue, you're just constantly, you're constantly depending. Yes, yeah. on, on other people. Great, um, Charles. It's been a, a pleasure having you here, and thank, thank you very you much for your questions. Very interesting. The whole aspect of the the word CEO, <laughs> as I mistakenly called it before. Um, so thank you very much, thank and you, hopefully you. maybe. In a year or so time, we can have another interview where we work on your progress on the on yeah. new venture. No, that'd be great. Um, to see where that gets to, exactly. Yes, and also how this show goes, because it, this is also a, 
a startup in the making, which I am truly enjoying running and I love interviewing people because it gives me the opportunity of asking questions that in a normal setting or hi, how are you doing? You don't go into this depth. Yeah, exactly. So this has yeah. got a bit of structure, so I love it. Great, well, I'm looking okay. forward to hearing it. Thank you very much. Thanks, Nassima. Thank you. Thank Cheers. You.